Now, it's mostly the Labor government who'll be breathing a sigh of relief that the parliamentary year is drawn to a close. But I think my next guest, he might be a very close second. Senator Ralph Babette from the United Australia Party has repeatedly aired his frustration with the parliamentary processes and the disassociation many parliamentarians have with the impact of their decisions in the real world. Senator Babette joins me now. Senator, great to have you on the show. You're concerned that the parliament is passing bill after bill without proper scrutiny or oversight. Now, I've got to point out, this couldn't be done without the support of the government, without the support of the Greens and a couple of the independents like Pocock and Lambie. Tell us, what has been going on in that madhouse? Corey, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. Love to be on your show. What you said, what we heard before about Peter Singer is truly disturbing. But back to Canberra. What we see in Canberra would be more aptly described as an autocracy, not a democracy. Where Labor has centralised power in the upper house with the help of Senator David Pocock, or as Pauline Hanson likes to call him, Doormat Dave, who may as well be a Greens uh, senator, and the Lambies, who may as well be Labor Party senators. As a result, Corey, we've seen 127 bills passed by Labor this year, an average of two bills per sitting day. This is madness. Now, we also know that under Labor, the public service has grown to the point where 2.5 million people currently work for the government. What we need to do is this. Take a leaf out of the Argentinian's president's playbook, take a chainsaw to the bureaucracy, a chainsaw to be government, because all extra bureaucracy does is help the globalists, massive corporations, the unions. It does nothing to help the average Australian, the working class people, small business or democracy. The evidence is all around us. Look how worse our lives are under Albanese, his big state, big taxing, big government. It's amazing how much damage they can do in 18 months, and I agree with uh, all that you say there, Senator. Hey, we also saw the introduction of the non-compulsory, and we're assured it's non-compulsory, the digital ID bill in this last session. Now, personally, I wouldn't trust government with any information if I had a choice, but especially not a licence to go on the internet, which is my uh, pejorative description. I think that's got the potential to become exactly that, though. What's the current right. status of the proposal by the government? It's, it's horrendous. This is the biggest affront to your freedom uh, that we've seen in our generation. Now, the digital ID, it will eventually be about as non-compulsory as that thing that so many people were forced to have a few years ago, that thing that wasn't compulsory unless, of course, you wanted to feed your family, pay your bills, have a job or leave your house. Now, for those who don't know exactly what the digital ID is, it is essentially the digitisation of your personal information under the guise of safety and security. It'll make it much easier for government and the corporations to control your life. I'll give you one example. I can see a future where digital ID is combined with the coming central bank digital currency, which is trackable money. Now, this technology means that the, but the government, they can not only see where you spent your money, but what you spent your money on. Then let's say, because of our commitments to net zero, the government sets a monthly carbon quota. What happens when you hit your carbon quota? Well, your card simply won't work at the checkout when you try to buy red meat. And, and guess what? You're going to have to eat the bugs, as Klaus Schwab likes to say. This is the reality and the potential power of digital ID in the future. Now, I do not trust government with this power. They have shown us what they are capable of in the last few years, and it's not good. It's certainly not good. And we know also the government have as many data leaks and uh, ID leaks uh, as uh, any, more, probably more than most corporates. 